Got to, man. Got to bounce back. Shout out to my homie Keys, Xavier Keys, on the vocals on this. Okay. Honestly, they couldn't stop me if they wanted to. Got to get up, go out and get it, and that's what I'm going to do. I've been focused. I'm not hungry. Yo, I'm starving, dude. Grind mode with my team. We making these power moves. Honestly, they couldn't stop me if they wanted to. Gotta get up, go out and get it, and that's what I'm gonna do. I've been focused, I'm not hungry, you're gonna starve me, dude. In grind mode with my team, we making these power moves. Cause I ain't got no time to be wasting with all this music I'm making. Man, I'm tired of being impatient, so I keep making these moves here with my crew. Vow to myself to overstay true, so I don't care what nobody else do, I know why. Like an erection, bumps in the road, but nah, I ain't stressing. I don't work out, but homie, I'm flexing. Every time I get on the beat and I bless it, rise and shine, and I never let another come and stop my grind, cause I grind all night at the gig, no lie. Then it's back in the booth for some overtime. Come on. Nope. Mm -mm. Shout out to Miss Amaramos. Shout out to Miss B. Uh huh. I said, uh, hey, hey. Hey, my mom's told me to get them, so I don't care what y'all say. I just keep grinding. Yeah, I stay working, cause it's, you know I'm, I said, uh, that's right. In the lab with a pen and a pad, I, I, let's ride. Make it look so easy, don't it make y'all mad? One thing I know, one thing is certain. I can't stop, won't stop, cause me and my team stay working One thing I know, one thing is certain Can't stop, won't stop, on the grind getting mine, I'm working No sleep, spit heat, killing these tracks And I'm not gonna stop till I'm up on top where I'm supposed to be Everywhere I go, I scream as Pete We more than a crew, we a family Working, trying to get a couple Grammys G Have them sitting on top of the mantelpiece Thank God Go hard, they just mad cause I'm on my job But where I'm from is to the ground to starve I'm starving, I just can't do it Not having it, unthinkable So I turn in the stretch, I'm strong And now I can reach the unreachable Let's go Hey, trying to Yo, they I said I can't sit still I just laugh at y'all haters Cause I Yeah, hey Hey, hey Hey, mom's told me so why don't let's go? I just keep yeah I stay cause it's you know I'm I said I that's right uh in the lab with a pen and a pad I I let's ride make it look so easy gonna make you mad one thing I know one thing is certain I can't stop won't stop. Cause me and my team stay working One thing I know One thing is certain Can't stop, won't stop On the ground, get in mind, I'm working Don't ever let anybody tell you That you can't get what you want Whatever you dreaming for, you get out there and you get it You make it happen Never mind the haters Real still Cause I All day Always Get them Yes sir I'm grinding, stay working, hey, I said I, that's right, in the lab with a pen and a pad I, let's ride, make it look so easy, don't it make you mad, one thing I know, one thing is certain, can't stop, won't stop, cause me and my team stay working, one thing I know, one thing is certain, can't stop, won't stop, on the ground, get in mind, I'm working. Got him. Yes, sir. Love him. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. The time is now 11.03 a.m. And you are listening to and watching Good Morning, Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. So we have real class, ladies and gentlemen, real class. We're not, 
right. We're not pushing a button on Sundays anymore. Not anymore. Uh, we have a special guest with us today. We have a friend of the show, author, editor, mom, ugly Christmas sweater wearer, but it's very fly. We have Victoria Hyla Maldonado. What is hey. up? We are also live at Tavern on Broadway, 24 North Broadway here in downtown Aurora. Great business and establishment. Uh, corner of New York Street and Broadway. Mark Hogan and Patrick, thank you very much for allowing us to do our thing in here, bring news to people at a local level. I also want to give some shouts out right now to the people who are, Ben and Josie Geller are here with us. What is up, you guys? And we also have Martrell Webb and V in the house as well. Check out Martrell. He also does interviews live on Facebook on Sundays as well. He just did Martha Paschke, state representative. Congratulations. Good message out there as well. Jimmy is our bartender today. How you doing, Jimmy? Hi, the ice is cold. The mimosas the are $4. And we have, last but not least, a very important part of the show, the team, the squad, the member, Monica here as well. Okay, now we also got books. So Victoria, starting off, let us know who you are and where you're from. Yeah, my name is Victoria Hyla Maldonado. Um, I'm originally from the, I guess, northwest suburbs, um, but I live in, in Montgomery, just like literally five minutes outside of Aurora. Um, and I'm an author, editor, freelance writer, anything words is what I do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I got a lot of stuff. And you have, you are also the proprietor of Victorious Editing Services. Yes, okay. yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's my editing company and I edit everything um, from restaurant menus to newsletters to dissertations ah. to resumes to whatever. Okay, so. uh, now most recently, uh, well, you've been doing a whole lot of good stuff, but uh, the last time we checked in with you, you were, had a pop-up show at McCarty Mills. And it was the book launch of your newest book, Monstery Gonstery Doc. Yeah, yeah, we had to do a nice Halloween pop up there, and uh, we got to donate a lot to charity um, to feed my starving children um, through a raffle or a giveaway thing we did. And yeah, Monstery Gonstery Doc is just like a cool Halloween themed. All the ma all the monsters are mice, and they're getting up the clock. It's it's basically his Hickory Dickory Doc, but mouse monsters. Yeah. So the the title brought it in for me, and I was like, I like that title. But then you you know. Good way to have a horror kind of theme. Yeah, it. and that's the true. artist is local in Aurora, Desalasi, Mari Dalval. Oh, and, uh, that's right. Yeah, so we collaborated on that, and we have she has two more book ideas that she just presented to me, and we're going to do at least two more together. So I'm very excited. All right, all right, more things are coming, ladies and gentlemen, as you just heard from Victoria. Uh, so we also want to say good morning to a friend of the show who just arrived. And she always does it with much style. Anna Sierra of Anna's Custom Treats. Live claps. No more clap button for us, ladies and gentlemen. No more clap button. All right, if you're just tuning in, we are here at Tavern on Broadway. Uh, Noticias y Mimosas, number four. Good morning to everybody just tuning in. Want to say thank you to everybody who came out for Coco Crawl. That was a lot of fun as well recently. And also want to say there's Holiday Art Bazaar going on. So uh, Dizalasi is over there as well. Jen Ingram Art, many other friends of ours, uh, great talented women doing their thing out here in Aurora. Okay, so it's a little rainy outside, but inside of here it's all love. And uh, it's a beautiful, nice weathery day for us in here. So take us through some of the titles that we got now. Tears for the Butterfly, I see Bartle, Barbie the Brave. Yeah, I've got two other kids' books. One is in Spanish as well. Um, but Tears for the Butterfly is a heartwarming thing. It's basically love, compassion, and empathy, and how putting all of those out into the world return on you tenfold. And it kind of also helps anyone dealing with loss. It kind of helps them through that in a gentle way. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's actually based on a science fact. Butterflies yeah. actually drink the tears of animals. Um, oh. And if humans oh. stood still long enough, it might happen too, but I don't know. Um, and then, um, Somebody should drink my tears. Okay. <laughs> Just soak all that up. Just so, soak yeah. it up. Um, and then Bartleby the Brave is a tale about uh, kindness and bravery in the face of bullying. So Nice, yeah. nice. In the face of bullying. In the face of bullying. So okay. when you're bullied, it's not about revenge. It's about being the better person and still being kind. Amen to that. Amen yeah. to that. And as you grow up, you realize that the bully is bullying. Most likely because he's getting bullied. Yeah, and that kind of happens in the story too. Um, the, yeah. the bully 
he's kind of underappreciated by his grandfather who he respects and that kind of gives him this grr factor right so, yeah. gotcha okay yeah and then um, i also um have uh, my novels that i've written i have a trilogy of novels out um in death we part running the mist and awake in illusion fields they're women's fiction um those are the big ones <laughs> nice um, and I'm working on a new book, which will come out next year, called Rooted Hearts, um, and it takes place in Mexico, which is kind of cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Also want to say good morning to a friend that just dropped in to see us, Tracy Duran, ladies and gentlemen. Tracy Duran is a local author and historian, all things Aurora, what she talks about. She gave Good Morning Aurora one of our first gifts, which was the Aurora book has a lot of the Aurora history in it, old school pictures. You might even be able to find your location now and see what was there 103 years ago or something like that. That's so so cool. I found my old place. My old place used to be a livery. That's where you'd go and get your horses uh, squared away, get the wheels in the uh, for your wagon back when Aurora didn't have paved streets. Yes. But enough about me. Let's get back to Victoria's books. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so those are my novels, but I also have uh, short stories and a bunch of anthologies. Um, there's a young adult romance called Young Crush. There's, um, I don't know, multi-genre called Storybook Pub 2. Everything involves one character and a pub, magical pub, like Tavern on Broadway is magical. Oh, hey, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But this Jimmy pub. back there like, yeah, that's right. That's right. I work here. <laughs> like this, this, this pub appears all over the world in magical places, and the main character, or the one character that's in all the stories helps all these people find love. So that's the premise. Okay. And then I've got spooky romance. I've got a ghost story, and it does include serial murder, because I'm weird. And um, then I have a horror story and a horror anthology that just came out as well. Okay, so. very cool. <laughs> Uh, now, we talked on our interview, we talked about In Death We Part. Mm -hmm. This is one of your like most prominent, yeah. uh, well-known books. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, tell us about this. Um, yeah, In Death We Part, um, it took me about 13 years to publish it because I was growing up. I started it when I was 15, mm -hmm. and it basically started because um, a crush I had in high school slid up to me in gym class and said, write a book about me. I'm like, okay. Right, right. <laughs> sure. Super narcissistic. Well, well, yeah, he is. And uh, he's, he's a real person. But um, yeah, so that one came to be, and I published it, I think, 13 years later. But yeah, it's the story of Brianna, who is almost 18. She loses her parents, and she gets thrown from Chicago into New Mexico to stay with her guardians. And then she finds herself and also some romance and you know other stuff very cool yeah. very cool all right um now we we're going to talk about awake and elysian fields uh definitely but i see up here we've got cards for all of you guys who are here take a card get to know victoria and uh who's this guy what is this is foo monica can we get a cut on on yeah let's, <laughs> let's put the camera on him yeah, this is Foo. Foo Dog is a good friend of mine. He's been with me since 2009. Okay. And he travels all over the country with me, having adventures, doing weird things, finding the biggest ball of stamps or whatever. Um, I mean, there's like a Cadillac, like a car Stonehenge in Texas, and ah, it's, it's weird. Okay. Um, but he also likes bars, so that's why he's here. Oh, well, good morning <laughs> to you as well, yeah. Foo. So I, I do a blog with him and then photos, and he's got some free stickers here for anybody in attendance. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, but he's sassy and he lets me type his blog because he doesn't have fingers. He does not. No. He does not. He does not. No. And he's, he's, uh, well, he's a strong silent type. <laughs> he's, he's the Gary Cooper of But he uh, can be super happy or he can be super pissed off. Nice. Mm. Nice. All right. How are you guys doing out there this morning, though? <laughs> yeah. This morning, yeah. You know what? It's kind of this is kind of cool when you do a, a live show. You know, it's kind of feel like I'm on stage right now. <laughs> but for all of you guys just tuning in at home, uh, we appreciate you checking us out. Good morning, Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. This is our fourth number, or excuse me, number four of our TCS email Moses, where we interview people, have a live show, talk to people, share stories, and then at the end. We uh, network, have a mimosa, sit back and chill. So we're glad that you guys are uh, here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those are real hands. It sounds like the track, but cool. Right, yeah, it does. It does. Um, so what's, now you've got a few things coming. Yeah. Okay, yeah. what's coming down I've the track? I've got a, a new children's book that's about halfway through illustration. Okay. Um, it's about a turtle. 
And it's called Tempest the Turtle, and it's about um, having patience and appreciating true friendship. So it's a really cool message. And my daughter is actually being illustrated into the book, which I'm so excited. Oh, nice, nice. There's a little girl in there, and we've, I, she's like, but mommy, why can't it be me? I'm like, Don't. That's a good, <laughs> right, right. So the illustrator found a way to, we did, I did a photo shoot with her about all the poses and things that I wanted in the book, and she's illustrating from those photos, and so it's just, she's being, she's being illustrated into the book, which yeah. is cool. And it was her idea to start with, so it's One all of the her. cool things about life, and that's kind of one of the things that we try to, that's kind of one of the messages about Good Morning Aurora. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not me? <laughs> why not you? Like, what is your story? What's the story of Anna's Custom Trees? What's the story of, good morning to Kathy Schweiger, of Community Foundation of Fox River Valley? What's your story? What's our individual story? That's a good, that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. She's very excited. Yeah. All right. Um, so I want to I want to kind of talk about the artistic process that went behind, especially Monstery Dostry Doc. So Monstery Dostry Doc, Tears for the Butterfly, and Barnaby the Brave all have different uh, illustrators. Yes, they do. What's your process of finding an illustrator? Are you sourcing these people or are they volunteering? What's the story? They're volunteering to an extent. Um, they're friends of mine. Um, some of them I knew before the book idea came about, some okay. of them I didn't. Um, so like Tears for the Butterfly is a friend of mine from high school and we reconnected over the pandemic. She was posting art demonstration videos and I started commenting then we started talking and then it just kind of snowballed from there. Um, so that's, um, she does watercolors and acrylics, so that's why the art sounds like that. Um, the Bartleby artist, I was sourcing photographs and artwork for the po poetry collection I put together. And I loved his birds, and I'm like, I have this idea for a bird story. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, would you be interested in illustrating a book? He's like, that's my biggest dream ever. I'm like, well, guess what, like, bro? Dream <laughs> ah, come say true. less. I'm like, again, the why not me? Yeah. So again, dream come true. It was his first book, and now we're working on the turtle book together. Um, and then um, for the monster book, um, I ran into Mari at the first Fridays, mm -hmm. literally, and I bought a little pre-drawn canvas for my daughter to paint and. I, I took a picture and I showed it back to her and we started talking, hey, would you ever be interested in illustrating a book? And I'm just, I love your style and I have this monster idea. And I <laughs> so, like that. And it just kind of collaborated and now we're going to be working on a couple more books next year. Okay, so, so as you grow, you're bringing people with you. Absolutely. And like all of them are first time illustrators and I love that because I have been a little stepping stone in their journey, which gives me satisfaction. Oh yeah. Just because I'm like, it's not just about me. It's about bringing the art and the the words together and making it into something really cool. Right, right. Well said. Very well said. Also, you guys, we have some breakfast food as well. So if you like biscuits and gravy, and if you like some eggs, you and if you see the thumbs up, Jimmy, go ahead and put the yes. Yeah, see that? It's top notch, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever you guys want. You guys can go ahead, get a plate, try some of the awesome food, awesome stuff. All right. Um, now, we're going to take a short break as Monica delivers to us some of the local news, headlines, and topics. And I'm going to give Monica my mic. Monica, rock the mic. Oh, no. Good morning and happy Sunday. Here are our local headlines. Don't forget to please subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all of our content. There you can also watch all of our interviews and receive notifications when we go live. Saturday, December 11th from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. You can find Santa and Pizza at the same time in Aurora. There will be a great fundraiser for Judge Bianca Camargo at Mike and Denise's Pizzeria, located at 1760 North Farnsworth Avenue. The price is $15 for adults and $8 for children, and that price includes pizza and soft drinks. Support our officials in a great Aurora restaurant on Saturday, December 11th. Friday, December 10th, guitarist Corey O'Donnell will be playing live at Java Plus from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Come out and support a local establishment and local artist here in Aurora. The very next day, Christmas at the coffee shop happens on Saturday, December 11th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Vendors, coffee, holiday delights, and a whole lot more. Java Plus is located at 1677 Montgomery Road in Aurora. Come out and support local for the holidays. Wednesday, December 8th at Blackberry Farms will be a My Time Holiday Express, an evening of jolly holiday fun. This will be held from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Blackberry Farms is located at 100 South Barnes Road in Aurora. Holiday train rides, a visit with Santa, holiday crafts, and Polar Express readings. 
Awesome, you won't want to miss this. This is, this is brought to us by the Aurora Public Library, Fox Valley Park District, and many other great sponsors. Yes. Awesome, and we also have our Good Morning Aurora t-shirts for $15 if you guys are interested in purchasing one today. There you go, there you go. Thank you very much, Monica. Thank you very much, all right. That's right. Monica delivers that news with zeal. The word of the day. I was gonna say panache. Put oh. the word of the day is panache, man. Oh. You know what? <laughs> you tune in to Good Morning Victoria Halamontanado. That's what it is. Uh, panache. That's the word of the day. All right. Good morning to you, Mary Folks. Good morning, Josue Paez. Good morning, Maria Chirito. Good morning, all of you guys tuning in live on Facebook. Bradley Clark wants to know: Can we order virtual mimosas? <laughs> Damn, that's a good idea. I'm what? all about it, man. Right? <laughs> Somebody come to your house with mimosas. Did you order mimosas, sir? <laughs> like, yeah, I did. I did. Put some clothes on, man. Okay. <laughs> So now, uh, and also, Maria Chirito and Dan Barrero. Good morning, Aurora, as well to you guys. Shirley Sandor, hello, everybody. All right, guys. So um, now getting back to our books and our novels. So tell me about Running in the Midst, Hearts Drawn Wild Trilogy, book number two. Yeah, so Running in the Midst comes right after uh, in Death we Part, and it basically picks up the right where it leaves off. Okay. Um, and it's a continuation of Brianna's journey. Um, she has more loss in her life, and this book is basically her feeling and trying to understand that she can move on with her life instead of being sucked into her tragedy. Right. So um, it's like, can can she love again? Can she do you know? Can she get back to her life? Can she enjoy things? So that's basically the premise. I don't want to wait for life to be over. <laughs> Everybody know that song though. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Holy cow. All right. Um, now that's book number two. Yeah. All right. And these are all, this is the series, correct? Yeah, that's right the here. series. All right. And then book number three. Is Awake in Elysian Fields. And yeah. this one, I always tell people it can be read by itself in case they're scared to buy all three at once. Right. Um, because it does follow a second character. It's um, it's in the same family. It's in the same story. But it's like 10 years later. Okay. So it really um, it's, uh, follows Elise. Um, who is actually mentioned in book one, becomes a ch is a child character in book two, and then this is her story as an adult. Yeah. And um, she was adopted into this family, and but her mother died when she was like five or six or seven, um, very badly. And all she has is a photograph of her mom in Paris, because that's where her mom is from. Right. And she kind of has a basic location, and she knows somebody that her mom knew. Okay. Um, and so she takes this to Paris with her when she goes and studies abroad, and it's her journey to figure out about her mother and learn who her mother was and how her mother got to the place that she was when she had her. Um, but it's also about her finding love in Paris, and it's mostly in Paris and also the Loire Valley in France, and there's a lot of French in there, so it's really fun. All right. And you speak French. I do. Mm -hmm. Oh. Y'all didn't know that, did you? Je parle de plus français. Yes, sir. C, C, that's right. We, oui, yeah. <laughs> All right. So outside, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are at Tavern uh, on Broadway, 24 North Broadway, right across the street from Balderas, Aurora Jewelry, and Bella Jewelry as well. Good morning to everybody who is here joining us and all of you guys joining us at home. Good morning to you as well. I want to say one more time, thank you very much to Jimmy of Tavern on Broadway. And also Mark and Patrick Hogan. Uh, Tavern on Broadway is a great place. Here on Wednesdays, they have uh, trivia. And it's also becoming a great place to have uh, First Fridays up in here. So there's some great musical acts. Mirabel Skipworth, Olivia Port's music, and other friends of ours have performed here. Come on out and try it. And they were packed in here on Friday night for Cocoa Crawl. It was packed. Try to come in here and get some cocoa. It was not going on. <laughs> not going on at well. Okay. And just walking through the door, live radio, ladies and gentlemen, Allie Hernandez. Hey. 
friend of the show, United States Marine Corps veteran, and we also just interviewed her recently for Veterans Day, and that was a very good, uh, good interview. It was a very so. deft camera dodge too. That was, that was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Allie's been rocking with. Allie is friends of ours since before Good Morning Morris, so she knows that sometimes with the show you got to thug, you got to weave, you got to bob and weave a little bit, <laughs> just like boxing, bobbing and weaving. Okay, um, now I see here, and uh, if Monica can give us a cut on this and show us this, uh, Backbone, the single parent romance and anthology. Yeah, that's, I, have an, I have one story in there. Um, it's, they're all uh, romances involving single parents finding love. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got one story in there. It's coming out in February. Okay. Um, so it can be pre ordered as an ebook. Okay. And then the other one, which is yeah. hilarious. Um, yeah, this one is called Caught Under the Mistletoe. Um, the cover actually makes me a little uncomfortable, but everybody loves it, so whatever. Yeah, they got um, the buff the buff dude with the, uh, with the Santa hat. Yeah, um, so yeah, that one actually comes out on Tuesday. Okay. So the pre-orders are soaring, and we're in promotion mode for that. And so yeah, that one will be available before Christmas. If anybody wants one, let me okay. know. Okay, all right, very yeah. cool. If y'all see a movie and need an actor, you know, let me know. <laughs> you know? We ain't really got the muscles like he do, but you know, we do good on the microphone. That's right, that's our job. It's all about the voice. Exactly. All right, uh, so quick question that I, I would like to gather from you. What is your writing style and how does it work? Uh, I draw, so sometimes depending on my mood, I may need a quiet place. I might need to be in my front office with a little bit of sunlight coming through. What's your writing style? How does it flow? I write when the mood strikes me. Okay. Um, usually, I, I like big chunks of silent time, but I've got six-year-old twins, so right. good luck with that. Um, so <laughs> that's a little hard. But yeah, no, I never write start, start to finish. I, I don't like doing that. I mean, with children's books, yes, because I have to keep a rhyme scheme. But like with the big books, I, I basically start in the middle, somewhere emotional, and then I build it up. From the beginning, and but until I have the end, I can't write the whole book. Okay. So it's very weird. It's it's not it's not linear, but then it becomes linear. Right. But yeah, so I just I write uh, what I'm inspired to write at the time. Okay. So. Now this now in death we part. That's the one that took you thirteen, 13 years. Thirteen years because I started right. when I was fifteen. Okay. <laughs> now what is your basic turnover time? For your other works, or do they fluctuate? You know, based on your writing style. It fluctuates, but I mean, this one is nearly 700 pages, and I did it in four months. Damn. So I was also unemployed, but you know, and it was COVID. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. So we what else can we do but read? Yeah. Um, I but, started this show with no job. Eh? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when you lose a job, get creative, let me tell you. <laughs> but like a children's book, I can actually do the writing of it in a day or two, but then the illustrations take a, a month or longer, depending on the artist's turnaround. But Turns for the Butterfly, she turned around in a month. Um, but Bartleby took about six months. Um, Mari put off doing the monster one for four months and then did it in a week. <laughs> Damn. That's hustle. Yeah, That's hustle. I, I, I had grace, but it was it was very stressful. I bet. Um, because we had the we had the McCarty Mills launch party and it was like we were still getting um, yeah. it was a little shaking. Like where the joints at yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, it really depends on the story. Like a short story for one of the anthologies may take me two or three days once I get going. Okay. Um but it's it all is sparked by an idea and then I just kinda of build the story around it. Very cool, very cool. Yeah. All right, the time is now 11.26 a.m. You are tuned into listening, watching, eating with, relaxing with, yeah. chilling with, and partying with. Good morning, Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Good morning to all of you guys out there watching us on Facebook. We're here at 24 North Broadway, Tavern on Broadway, $4 mimosas, books, and a little breakfast, too. How about that? How about that? The Great American Morning Show. Absolutely. Nobody clap. That's all right, though. <laughs> it's the eggs. They're like, they're going right. to the biscuits. Everybody the eating. They know they're quiet. Everybody <laughs> eating. Yeah. Everybody's like, yeah, just keep, just keep going. Keep going. I'm eating. All right. Um, now, I see that you have something that I, because I, I got to shop these out. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you at home, take a look at this. This is a piece of life right here. This is a bookmark. And we are in an age where all of our books now, we have the Kindles. You can read the ebook. You can simply swipe with your finger and go from page one to page 700. But if you're like me, you like to have the pages. You like to have your shelf aligned with your book covers. And you need a bookmarker instead of turning your pages. 
put one of those in there to give you your place. Shout out to book markers, they are still a thing. Good to see that even as far as we've come with technology, some of the old classics will never, uh, will never go away. Never go away. Yeah, I will always need physical books. They're just, I mean, all my stuff is also ebooks, and right. I'm working on the audiobook angle, but I mean, I will always have the physical books because I just like the smell, I like the feel. Yep, yeah, I do too. All right, so Barbie the Brave, there's, um, there's a Spanish version yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. Do all of your books have a Spanish version or translation, or is that the only one? That's the only one so far. Um, I do have Tears with the Butterfly in Spanish ready to go. I just haven't pulled the trigger. Okay. Um, and it's called Lagrimas. I think it's Porta. But no, it's Para. <laughs> para la, mar la, la Mariposa. And um, I don't know if it's, is it Porta or Para? I have it read on the cover, but I don't remember. Para. Para. Um, that's a hard one. And, um, but yeah, no, that one's ready to go. I just haven't done it yet. Um, I haven't really thought about doing Monster Down, Straight Off in Spanish, but I might get there. We'll see. Okay. The bigger ones are harder, but <laughs> actually my novels are being translated into Romanian, which is the weirdest thing. But it's just a, it's a collaboration that I've gotten with a Romanian author. So I've done oh, her wow. books in English. She's done mine in Romanian. So. How about this? You know what? That reminds me. We're going to do a little trivia right now. Ooh. We're going to do a little... You guys ready for some trivia? Oh, yeah. I know Ben is. Ben loves trivia. All right. How about this? Um, Romania is the... I'm going to give you the easy one. <laughs> an easy one for you guys at home, too. Romania is the home country of what fictional character? Very good. <laughs> Count Dracula, that is right. That is right, because Transylvania is a town in your That's right. That rhyme. Transylvania is a town in Romania. Uh, yes. Yep, just ripping. Just ripping. Just ripping. All right. Um, so, we're, uh, books are being translated into Romania. Uh, I kind of want to get from you the process of editing and everything because you do your own editing as opposed to going to an editor. Yeah. I've had the traditional thought that if one writes a book, I send it to the editor, he does his thing, and then it goes. You seem to have cut out the middleman there. Is that the case? I have to because I don't trust anyone. Okay. <laughs> because I do. I mean, grammar and editing is just, it's like breathing for me. So right. why would I farm that out and then somebody puts a comma in the wrong place and I'm pissed? You know? Because that's me. If you, if, oof, yeah, oof, like, oh, right? Is anybody else out there like that? If it's misspelled or there's no ass or, no, no I'm not. Apostrophe. Right. Oh, <laughs> like, what is that? So you can't pluralize with an apostrophe. <laughs> Don't kill me. Exactly. Uh, no, but I, I know, but I do send it out to readers. Like, there's something called beta readers. So you do send them out to beta readers. They get to read the book for free, and then they, they give you their feedback. It's like, well, I didn't get this. I need more from this character. This didn't make sense. So yeah, I do have some, some people read it before the finished product because yeah, you miss things if it's your own story. Okay. But I would get the final the final read through because um, just making it perfect. Um, right. Yeah, that's what I like to do. Now um, that's our segue into Victorious Editing Services. Now, did you start that after having written, or was that always in your mind? First of all, did you work with? Did you ever work with an editor? Ever, period. Well, yeah, I mean, I spent a good portion of the last 20 years um, editing for other companies. So I, would, I worked in um, like trade publications for architecture or meeting planning or, you know, relocation services, a science company um, where I would do all their product copy. So yeah, I, I've had editing jobs, but then it kind of, I don't know when it was, like maybe 2010, maybe 15, <laughs> it's a big, big blur. Mm -hmm. But I, I just established this because I have, we have two restaurants in the family that are local. Torres Mane up on Galena and Lincoln, and then Hukalita Tacos up in North Aurora. That's you? Oh yeah, that, well that's my, it's my niece. It's um, my, 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 my husband's niece and her husband, they own Torres Mane. Oh. Yeah, so I've done their menus, I've done Hukalita's menus, and so I'm just like, why can't I do this for other people? So right. I, I, like people come to me for resumes, and it's really funny, my friend Robbie, I've done his resume three times because he just isn't happy with the job. And every single time I've ever done his resume, he gets a job offer on the spot. And I'm hey. like, that's cool. All and right, I'm like, all right. <laughs> all you brothers, if you at home with no job, come on, send your resume. Hey. Hey. Victoria, I saw you on Good Morning Aurora. Can I get that? <laughs> it's a small investment, you know. And then, yeah, but I've done uh, like PhD dissertations. Um, I've done other books, um, and I've, I've got all that on my website. Um, I've done books that are from translations, I've done children's books, I've done novels, it just, I, whatever. 
Okay. I'm up to anything. All right. Do you have a favorite genre when you read or, or the kind of uh, stuff that you consume? I typically read romance just because that's where I started reading, um, and that's what I typically write. Um, but I do like a good fantasy book, you know, okay. and like historical fiction. Um, like uh, Devil in the White City, so good. I hear good things about that book. I gotta read it. I got. Oh wow, we got some fans of so Devil you, in the White City. You get the history of the Chicago Exhibition, right? Ex exhibition. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and then you get the murders that were happening at the same time. But it's this beautiful like narrative of this historical period. And there's another one called Sex in the Second City. I don't yeah. remember the author, but that's about the brothel, the levy district, um, and that's very interesting. So wow. I like that kind of historical fiction where you get the novel style, but it's actually true. Okay. So. And how can people find you and your work? Yeah, all my stuff is on my website. It's vict uh, victoriajhyla.com. So Victoria with a C, sometimes people wonder. And then jhyla.com. Um, that has all my editing services, all my books, all the purchase links, everything. And I'll be putting this on there too. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> shout out, shout out. All right, those of you guys at home, good to see you guys. It is uh, Sunday the 4th, or no, the 5th, the excuse me. <laughs> Sunday the 5th, we are here at Tavern on Broadway, 24 North Broadway here in downtown Aurora. Great place, shouts out to Mark and Patrick Hogan, and shouts out to all of you, all of you great people, all of you wonderful people in here. Good to see you guys. Um, it's interesting when you do this because at the same time, Monica and I have talked about this a couple times. When we interview, when we see our friends out in the community, when we talk to our people, we're not just people, we're all a business. I'm looking right now and everybody represents an organization or has a tie in the community that helps bring each other forward. Um, so really good stuff. Well, yeah, on that note, I mean, Anna over here, like I met her through this show, but then when we were doing our event over at Mercardi Mills. I'm like, we need cupcakes. Yeah. And so I, I messaged her. I'm like, hey, would you want to do this event with us? I mean, you're going to sell your stuff, whatever. And she's like, yeah, sure. Yep. And she themed these awesome monster cupcakes after like the monsters in the book and she sold out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. See? Good so stuff. I love bringing people good out. Stuff. It's yeah. Fun. yeah. Um, now, also, in that vein, too, uh, I want to plug Tracy Duran and her great work because, so this building here that we're in, this used to be Tavern on the Fox, is what it was before this, but the building has a lot of history here, um, it's been around for a long time, and Tracy has interesting history on that, and she has detailed with us uh, many times, and when we interviewed Tracy at the last, OT says few mimosas, if you guys watch that episode, you can definitely see and hear uh, what this building used to be, used to have, and used to contain. So, really good stuff. Awesome stuff. All right, so what is, hold on, what time is it? 11.36, all right, good. Um, so what's next for you? And what's next for uh, Victoria, uh, Victoria's Ending Service? Um, yeah, well, I, I still get more and more jobs um, coming through there. I've joined a, a sure. local branch of what's called WESOS. It's Women Entrepreneur, Entrepreneur's Secrets of Success. Okay. And it's just like, and that has gotten me all over the place um, doing different editing jobs. Um, and I'm also um, involved with two different publishing companies. I do consulting on children's books, and then I also um, edit manuscripts for another publishing company. Um, Good morning. <laughs> Hello there. The shows get interrupted by great people, ladies and gentlemen. It's the only show where people like the interruptions. Hold on. Okay. Wait. Okay. And then I, I've got more books coming. And like I said, I'm working on my new uh, adult novel, and I've got at least one or two more kids' books in the works, and those are just snow, snowballing around, and we're going from there. Okay. And then um, actually, Mari and I are tossing around an idea of doing an event series of our own that highlights illustrators, authors, and musicians, and we're hoping to bring that to, to pass this coming year. I mean, it's so new, we're just tossing around ideas. Right. But I'm excited to bring that back to Aurora and really you know, help the artists and other authors and musicians that are local just get some more, more time. Right. Uh, and in that vein, right now taking place is the Holiday Art Bazaar that's happening at Gallery 1904, the lower level of 1 East Benton Street. A lot of our friends and people at the show are, are down there. Jen Ingram Arch, uh, Madi Dizalasi, Maureen Gassick, and many other people are down there with their art and everything. And that goes until 3 p.m. today. So if you're around in uh, Good Morning or uh, 
It just happened like that. If you're around in Aurora, see, we can't even say Aurora without good morning, right? Yeah. Um, if you are around in Aurora, bring your umbrella. It's a little rainy, but uh, head on down to Holiday Bazaar. They'll be there until 3 p.m. Yeah, it's a cool space. I went there with my kids on Friday, and they terrorized the artists. It was nice. Funny. Now you, uh, so you were you were down there on Friday. Friday was also the uh, cocoa crawl for those of you who are out and about having a good time. Lots of great, delicious hot cocos and everything. Um, what is your perspective? on where Aurora currently is and, and going. How do you feel? Optimistic going into a brand? I am so optimistic about Aurora. I love all the new businesses coming in. I love the events that Aurora is having. I mean, my kids literally love coming down here. We drive through it to go. They're like, we're in Aurora. Let's go. And I'm like, OK, well, we'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> like, so Thought you wanted to go home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of said children, they're coming in the door. Um, but yeah, but they love coming down over and they're excited anytime we can come down here and walk around and everything. There's the twins! And there they, they are! There they are! Hi guys! Yeah. Hello there! <laughs> very cool, very cool. <laughs> and away in the... <laughs> very cool, very cool. Very cool. If you guys are just tuning us, good morning to you people at home. It's 11.39 a.m. Postway Pais of Harry Beast Dog Radio. What is up? Harry Beast Dog Parlor is located at the intersection of Lake Street and Galena. That's another great place to get your uh, get fluffy a trim or go to get your cats, nails cleaned, all that all that other good stuff. All that good stuff. Yeah, another of our connections that I'm loving. I love that like business owners are, are focusing on certain areas that are just up and coming. And we've oh, yeah. got the uh, craft urban going in pretty soon. I'm very excited about that. Um, and then um, the Cotton Seed Creative is actually moving from here over to that area, and my books are going to be over there, which is kind of fun. All right. Yeah, that's right. Cotton Seed Creative Exchange is moving to River Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah it'll be River Street. Uh, they're moving to River Street. We're looking forward to uh, their success coming up in the new year. So we are going, or it's, it's December. This year flew by. Uh, as we know, we all lived it together. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm optimistic and happy about the next year. Uh, Good Morning Aurora is looking forward to doing a whole lot more and showcasing and showing a whole lot more of Aurora. Uh, all of you listeners, fans, and subscribers, we thank you very much for helping us to get through a year with uh, stories and all kinds of great stuff to talk about. We want to showcase a, a whole lot more. So we appreciate all of you guys. Got to give love back to the fans and the people because we, we really do appreciate it, man. It's great stuff. Great stuff. How's that breakfast though? How's that breakfast? Yeah. That's right. That's right. All right. Um, so the next thing I want to ask you about. Oh, that's right. Excuse me. The evidence I have lived. Yeah, this is a poetry anthology. Um, the only writing I did on it was the introduction. Um, it's a poetry collection by a friend of mine who passed, um, unfortunately, from suicide almost three years ago. Um, and it's all of her poetry. She never published, never had confidence that it was any good. But all the poetry, is, a lot of it was dated, so it journals her struggles in life and the, all the stuff she went through. She had hemiplegic migraines, she had depression, anxiety, she couldn't work after a time because of seizures, um, and she never, um, believe she had worth and so I asked her husband after she passed can I have her poetry and do something with it that's the something it's a 500 page poetry anthology wow. and it features some of her original artwork and then I also asked artists from all over the country to donate artwork nothing in there was bought for the book but they all agreed to, with you know credit and everything to give me the artwork for the book and so it's this beautiful collection and she was she actually lived in Aurora she's originally from Buffalo but she uh lived you know, got 15, 20 years of her life here in Aurora too, so she's local. And it's just, um, all the money for that anthology goes back straight to the family. Um, and I'm so happy that I get to be a part of it and put it forward, tell yeah. her story. So. Yeah, it's, you know, late as you mentioned, but the story did get out there. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel that everybody, you know, let me talk, to, I'm a huge reader. I feel like everybody in some way is carrying a story It'll maybe get out with audiobook. It'll maybe get out via a song or music, but like everybody has a story. And it does seem kind of, it does seem sad to not tell your story, right? To yeah. not get your story out there. 
Uh, however, you got to do it. Yeah. You know. And it's all it's all expression. I mean, it could be art. It could be t doing a painting. You know, that's a story. It, right. it could be a song, it could be a book, like you're saying. And um, really, and that's one of my favorite things is helping other people come to that. And yeah. that's why I do book consulting. If you've got an idea for a book, I'm going to say it to everybody. Um, you know, come to me and say, hey, I've got this idea. What do you think? And can this be something? I'm happy to tell you, hey, we need to do more work. Or, yeah, that's a cool idea. Let's go. And I'll help you get through the process. Because that is true. Everyone has a story. We are all books in some sense. And we deserve to be read. Right. Uh, what's the, uh, not the best book, do you have a favorite book? Of all time? Yeah. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I, the only thing that comes into my head is The Wizard of Oz. Okay. Which is weird. Frank Baum. Fra L. Frank Baum, yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah, I was obsessed with him when I was like in third grade, and I read all of his books. He doesn't just have Wizard of Oz, that's like the first book, and he's a whole litany. Really? Um, and it's this whole world that he created, and it's a beautiful fantasy world of this just magical place that has its massive problems, you know, but it kind of, it's a, a metaphor analogy for our world. Like, it's I a, just, it's I, a very good one, isn't it, when right? I, when I was in third grade, I didn't care about that. Right. <laughs> I was like, oh, there's a scarecrow, yay. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, if you can read it as a kid and get that stuff, and then you read it as an adult, and you're like, wow, this is like insanely political, but so cool. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I think that has longevity. The, the language is a bit dated at this point, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's great. Yeah, I, uh, well, that's kind of one of the things that I noticed and picked up on earlier, like with Wizard of Oz. Like, each of the characters has an issue that everybody has, right? The lion didn't have courage. The scarecrow was trying to get a brain. Like, all of those things, they mean so much in the present, yeah. in, the, in the present tense. It's just how they're being conveyed and portrayed is just, that's the creative part being yeah. different. Yeah. Uh, my favorite book is Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. Uh, it's a really good book. Once upon a time, once upon a time in school, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take it back for you. Once upon a time, they had these book lists. And you could order a book, and they would bring, you could just get any book you wanted. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, that opened up a world of knowledge, a world of vocabulary, a world of, you know, absolute excitement by reading. When you read, you can paint your own picture. Well, and that's one of the things people ask me, what goes into making a good writer? And the, hands down, it's reading. Like, the more you read, the more you understand language, but you also understand structure and presentation right. and drama and all how it all fits together. So that's good advice for anybody wanting to be a writer. Read a lot. Read a lot. That's right. It doesn't matter right. what you read, as long as you're reading. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so we talked about the pre-books. We talked about what's coming in. February. Uh, we also talked about your work with authors. Now, um, do you have more pop-ups coming? So we know about Madi, you guys are going to be doing things. Is there anything on like the current horizon that we can look out for? Um, I am doing a pop-up on the 17th. Um, it's actually, I forget, it's a beauty salon over in Aurora. I want to say it's on Lincoln. Okay. Um, it's uh, in the evening on the 17th. Um, my husband doesn't even know about that one yet. Uh, so. Like, are we going somewhere else? <laughs> He like, as long as they got biscuits and gravy, we're going to be all right. <laughs> but yeah, that one just popped up. So that's my last one before Christmas. Then I'm taking off for the holidays. And we'll see what next year has to bring. I'm sure there'll be a lot more. I mean, we're just, we're just having fun. All right, all right. Um, so to give you guys a little bit of early news, um, we have Good Morning Aurora's two-year anniversary party. Next year, we'll be at McCarty Mills once again. So get ready for that. It'll be in May. Um, McCarty Mills and Good Morning Aurora have a uh, both have a birth date, which is about a week um, about a week away from each other. Um, so we tie them in and make them a, uh, a big shebang, and that'll be at 140 South River Street, and it'll be a uh, really good time to get ready for that. And we also have breaking news. And you know what? Yeah, here with the breaking. Yeah, <laughs> we'll give you a, we'll give you a little preview right now of the breaking news. <laughs> Good morning, Aurora. We'll be having a New Year's Eve party here at Tavern on Broadway. So get ready for that. That's right. That's right. There will be a champagne toast, and you have to wear black and white or shades of black and white. So this will be a black and white party here at 24 North Broadway. Come on out, party with us, hang with us, and uh, relax and chill with us. You know, we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. 
All right, so first things first, when it comes to headgear, look at these guys with the headgear. Monica, can we get a cut of the headgear? Look at them, the hats, ladies and gentlemen, the hats. I'm digging the hats, digging the hats. She thinks I'm her you-know-what hat. Ah, I like that, I like that, very cool. Um, you know, so I want to say that, um, you know, we appreciate you coming out to talk to us and everything. We appreciate learning to know, uh, excuse me, getting to know more about the books and everything that you've written. Another question for you. Is there anything that you have not written and you want to write? I ask because we interviewed, um, we've interviewed some actors and actresses. And I, one of the questions I would like to know is there is there a role or a character that you are waiting to play, like you really want to audition for? Uh, I think the same could kind of be said for an author. Yeah, it's kind of like roles you play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah um, I have a lot of uh, more short stories coming up that I am intending to write, but there's one um, book that's nonfiction that I want to write, and um, it's actually um, based on my journey to faith. Because um, it was very dramatic, um, and it happened about seven years ago. Um, but just like telling my life and where I came from, because I was an atheist for a good thirty years, okay. and now the you know, first last seven years, I mean, I've been a Christ follower because of this penultimate like event that happened in my life. And so, um, yeah, that's a story that I've been told by many people that I should write, right. um, and I just need to do it. Okay. But yeah. So hopefully that'll come out at some point. So. And we gotta. We got lady, uh, what's that, Ben? Oh, no, question for our guests. Question for the guests. Questions in the audience. You can take questions. Try to do this and just walk around. Yeah. What's up, we sir? We connect so well. Uh, in, the, in the book with the Legion Fields yeah. on the title, is there any, number one, is it setting in New York in Oh no, no, it's set, in, it's, it's set in Paris. Okay. Um, there's a big thoroughfare called Champs Elysees, and uh, it literally means the Legion Field. Um, and then the main character is Elise, and it's uh, like this place that heroes go at the end to relax after they've done a victory. So. Ah, okay, yeah. all right. Because I was wondering, is, is there an Elise in New York? Is that a town in New York? Elysian Field is a place for a couple of days, discovery and creation of baseball. Ah, so okay. That's where the first baseball game was played. Yeah, Interesting. I your, Didn't your know reference. That. No, this one's in Paris. Interesting. <laughs> Did not know that. Another guest. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the crowd is growing. The crowd is growing. <laughs> A wave with a little bit of a dam right there, but it's all good. Right? We gotta get ready for those. And hello, lady. Hello, hello there. Good to see you again. Um, so, real quick, gotta keep an eye on our time. The time is 11:50 a.m. You guys are tuned into and watching. Good morning, Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Good morning to Monica. Good morning to Jimmy, Patrick, and Mark Hogan as well. We're here at Tavern on Broadway, 24 hours. All right, and we have an introduction, yes? Go yeah, ahead. this is Mika. She's one of my kids. That's Joaquin over there. Hello, Joaquin. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Good morning. And they Good promised morning. not to terrorize the show today. Ah, well, thank you, guys. But well, we appreciate having you on the show last time. Very cool stuff. Um, so we, now we talked about all of the, the books and the work. Um, and for those of you, so this is number four of our Noticias y Mimosas. The next Noticias y Mimosas, we will have friend of the show, Eric Pry, curator of the GAR Museum on uh, the first Sunday in January. He'll tell us about the GAR Museum, he'll tell us about Aurora's military history, and he'll also let us know about the mayors in Aurora history who were veterans. Aurora had a mayor who was a Spanish-American war veteran. Um, so there's a whole lot of history at a local level when it comes to the military and when it comes to the second largest city. Uh, so prepare for that. But um, the, uh, one of the last questions I got for you is, you told us about your writing style and how it flows. You don't, do, you know, you don't just write the whole book. Um, has, has writing changed your life? Not to be, not to be cliche, but uh, you know, has, has it, your life? I don't know if it's changed my life, but it's definitely formed my life. Okay. Um, so in that sense, I guess that's the change, because I mean, without it, I would be a completely different person. 
So, um, yeah, it just, it's how I think, it's how I work. I see things as stories. Um, and I see interactions with people and relationships kind of is, as a story thing, which makes it challenging sometimes. Right. Because I want it to go a certain way and it doesn't. I'm like, oh. That's life though, that's right? That's life. Um, so, but yeah, I like to, to see the world. Like I said, like you were, we're talking about earlier, everybody has their own story and everybody has their own book. And it's only when you enter in as a secondary character to their story that you get to see some of their story. Right. So in that sense, I guess, yeah, but without writing, I don't know what I would do. But yeah, I've been blessed to be able to try to do this as a full-time thing. And um, it, it's starting to work out. <laughs> so that's Good. cool. Good. And um, but yeah, no, I, I don't want to go back. I mean, this is what I want to do. And well, we're just trying to make it happen. You know, I think that's a good way to end. <laughs> we're not going back, ladies and gentlemen. We're going forward and we're making it happen. Um, so when we do this from 11 a.m. to noon is our interview portion. And from noon to one, we will be here networking and chilling, relaxing, four albamosas, some great breakfast, biscuits and gravy, eggs, and a whole lot more here at Tavern on Broadway, 24 North Broadway here in downtown Aurora. Um, so the that was a good statement. Give us a word of the day before we wrap it up, because I see Mika here, and that means it's time for mom to get off the microphone. So, <laughs> Like, mom, I'm trying to hear. I gotta go home and listen to you anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, I just think that, I mean, this world needs a lot of love, compassion, patience, empathy, and this is a good time of the year to make sure that we think about that and do it, um, but then take it out into the rest of the year and take it out into the new year. So. Right, right. All right, we're gonna take it out to the new year. That's a good clap. Good clap. <laughs> We appreciate all of you great folks at home for tuning in. Thank you very much. Subscribe to the show on YouTube. And as and uh, we'll see you guys back here Monday morning, tomorrow at 8 a.m. like we always do. Same bat time, same bat channel. Take care of yourself and each other. <laughs>